do spend time with his little sister. Jane? This program brought together and said yes, Lord, let me go. Layered narratives in the arrivals corridor, unfolding before the disembarking guests as they walk towards the baggage claim area. Each commission work reveals layer after layer the changing landscapes, dreams, and dynamics of the urban India that awaits the traveler beyond the doors of the airport. Thresholds of India, designed to direct and control circulation of passengers, a huge wall 60 feet high and 3 kilometers long runs through the terminal. It's the largest art in public space initiative in India, probably in the world. It tells a story of a country that lives in multiple country centuries at once, where past, present and future are reinterpreted through six thematic compositions namely India Elemental, India Silent Senators, India Global, India Reads, India Seamless, and India Moves, stitching together more than 6,500 artifacts from 10th century to contemporary in a series of magical installations. It is really spectacular and, as I said, enormous sculptures. There's an expected footfall of 40 million visitors annually, much more than any museum in the world. Metaphor of the concept of national integrity, <coughs> a virtual metric book, poems, mythical airplanes, imaginary flying creatures crafted by the potters of Mulela village near Adair. Jaipur's Hava Mahal is imaginatively interpreted and Uran Katola, Katola, mythical flying part, part bird, part machine, they own part of it. Airlines are now thinking of initiating new flight coupons from Mumbai to Mumbai so that one can experience as much of the incredible artwork being put into the public domain by Mr. City. Having shown you only a glimpse of the vast repertory of work that Mr. City has. Um, sorry, um, has done but so far refused to publish. May I now call upon Raji himself to tell us about the challenge of design for the contemporary in the idiom of traditional skills. But after this, uh, just I do want to say a few words. For the, there's something which is very quickly written by Shoba Devi in Mumbai Mirror, which I just thought of while you see some more slides. She writes for the multiple Indian and international awards, recognitions, and accolades that have come his way. The essential Rajiv remains the same. And I know it is part, it is the purity of that childlike curiosity that continues to drive him to explore, to keep searching for that incredible something which perhaps nobody else can find. But the wonderful thing about Rajiv is that once he finds it, he joyfully shares his delight with the world. It is this act of unconditional, unconditional generosity that makes him who he is. Um, he, it was lovely because as soon as he arrived yesterday, he was searching for Nussi because he had said, Mere saath amrit sar se mein naan le kya hai naan aur chole aur ek mein bhuta rast vaha se nikal ke laya ho uska sarsu ka bhuta uske saath mitti lagi hui amritsar ki kyunki main yahan lahore mein laake lagana cha raha hu it's it's just so beautiful
deeply honored as I am to be here. As I was saying, very deeply honored I am to be here and committed to my dear Lucy, whose word will always be my command, and to my Hamsafar Hamid Haroon, who reminded me that I had no other choice. Uh, let me at the outset confess how intimidated I feel at a gathering of such accomplished wordsmiths. I have never professionally honed in to the skill of writing a book. This is really my first lit fest ever. And that too in a city where I have appeared again and again in search of that which is without tangible form, more elusive than its intangible resonances. Both my mother and sisters were born here. Uh -huh. Punch of wire, indeed, could be all our lives locked in separate rooms of the same house. I walked across the border for the first time yesterday, carrying a sarsim, as Uja said, uprooted from our side of Baghdad to be planted here, and the words escaped me to describe what my hosts on both sides, there and here, felt about never having crossed that glowing white line on a black tarmac. The first time I set eyes on a Pakistani was really at a cemetery as a tourist in Arlington, more than 10,000 miles away. That's a lot before I was 16. Today, when I was. and 
हाथों से उम्र बढ़ जाती है खुद कर लो हिसाब हुनरमंद का एक दिन बेहुनर का एक
Or should our interior decorators, architects, public work contractors, ignoring indigenous talent, reflect on their neglect of traditional resources? The knowledge systems using traditional material like mud, wood, bamboo, stone, etc., do not feature in any local engineering code or contracting of norms of our very looming building industry. Uh, building works can be reserved for the thriving craft sector. Uh, in fact, uh, Bhutpali in Bhutan does 25%. Bhutan does about 45 We have a rule that says 2%, which helps me work the budgets for the airport. The owners, the reddies, were very, very, they were true patrons, the true sets of the really be ready to invest the money to be able to put into this. Wouldn't be possible without the patronage. I don't know what the figures in Pakistan are, but you should find out. But if there is such a rule in the public works at all. Now, uh, I once, uh, I'm not going into the fact that determine our, uh, our love for it. How do you find 
what is the role of pedagogy. I'm not getting into this again. Also, the very idea of the giving process, which we have to now really face every day in our lives. For every rupee spent in my education, 25 naira pesa came out of the pockets of the man whose child will never see the inside of the school. So there has to be a much greater amount of energy is put in to giving back. And to prevent this country from becoming our own subcontinent, not just becoming jobless, but also we have to think of talismans that makes um, this country ruthless, our own very way, ruthless, ruthless, futureless, voiceless, and all this implies many other implications that I know we'll not be able to go into. Uh, there are factor four, factor five, things that I would love to discuss with you at another forum, but which we never do in pointing our costs for all this, for what we buy and what we sell, to the rest or to even our own people. Um, now, the sixth point is really about improvisation. Since I'm talking about this is all the unemployment, um, I think that we have to really go a lot from our, you know, our mothers like Gandhiji, the great designers, uh, the intuitive, the austere, the hugely improvisational, and we have to use our instinct. And women make better designers with their left brain functions, genetically tuned to recycling, intuition and common sense go together. And I, of course, have been a great uh, supporter of the concept of the jugar. Jugar is a much abused term, never really quite understood. But I think we need to understand how we're going to indigenize what we need most. So we have to simply ask if modernization is merely westernization and what global standards and what we have to create as our own standard is really what the West has to say. Now, to be original is very important, to be beautiful for our efforts is very important, and if we become mediocre, we are nothing but uh, uh, um, an imitation. We are imitation if you are mediocre. Uh, so, slow pace, everything has slow pace, slow technology, slow food, and we talk about So, I hope
breaking much of his heart and hierarchies, but hierarchies, but uh, preventing us from isolating them from one from the other. We cannot pluck a flower without altering the star. Everything connects, said Charles Eames. Much before we had our own mission, the world of love, to be an architect, you have to be a dancer. To be a dancer, you have to be a musician, a musician, a sculptor, and poetry and mathematics all get connected. So this leads me on to my last, my tenth point, very happily, very quickly, but quintessentially an Indian paradigm for a creative awakening, enshrined in the word rasa. The luminescent journey of emotion. After crossing 16, I've stopped responding to art or design that doesn't move me. Rasa is not taught in design or architecture schools. There's still no curriculum to evaluate our own theory and concepts of shared aesthetics and functional beauty. The Sufis have its way, they call it Farah, Zikr, the way of seeing, and its famous life. The experience of awakening Rasa is a cumulative and a culminative sense of what it means to be alive, more than being worthy, enabling us to be completely receptive. To the intangible domain, consider the Sanskrit meaning of culture, to grow, purify, prepare, polish, consecrate. Gandhiji preferred the word Sabhata, a collective goal, a civilization process. Tradition finds no word for design, as I said, that recognizes its presence in all cultures. Consider the ancient Chinese ritual bronze, the tin and the cooking vessel unearthed from the Bronze Age of the of the of the Zing. Um, Zing and Zao stands for culture's nourishment, for the family and for the honoring guests to keep light the flames to keep the spirit of life, to continually renew the life sources. According to Chawi, the dying never stops nor slackens. Do I pass through life, or does life pass through me? Thus says the Sufi poet and musician, as was in The question answers itself. Standing in the book of says, invisible cities. Muses, what thoughts come to a man who sits on his doorstep in the cool of the evening? Or to the man in Benin or Haiti, or in Malabar, who slips in and out of the spirit world to reveal intangible secrets in a tangible world, or to the Polynesians, uh, whose ancestors built the largest known culture sphere of 10 million square miles on ocean currents alone, or to the Mastic of Mexico, whose whistle complex messages across hills and valley, to the Amazonian Baroni, who sends each piece that passes by its human, or to the native Australian, creating his parallel universe of the dream time. What about the tsunami? When it happened, I used to tell my friends who were in the responsible places. The Zauras left the place three days before. They put so many scientific gadgetry into the city, into the, into the seabed, having really tried to scientifically examine what is it that made them move long before. Are these cultures replete with the wholeness of highly evolved sciences on the edge of disappearance? Are these unending vocabularies of the spirit of eating the noodle? Should pedagogy of design, as we understand it, do better to help them make it better? Can one even try to evolve the universal matters? I repeat again and again, what we need are emotional awakenings to sensual perceptions beyond indices and mattresses, beyond gizmos and mimics. We must battle the shrinking of the senses, learn also to see from the back of the head, to hear, to sing, dance, touch, taste, cook, to breathe, to smell, all together. Creativity is nothing else. We have to seek that whispered experience that moves the mind, that helps us to dust the mirror of our heart enabling us to perceive a reflection clear and liquid when the eye, resonant with detail, hums into the air. <coughs> Look for the subtle, elusive, even everyday objects or common skills are not what they seem. Look at the henna, nothing they could mention. But design is nothing else if you, see, if you don't see that yet. In spite
inspiration is the world of knowledge and the mental skill. Jinin 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 Chadaria, Tahaka Tana, Tahaka Bernie, Kaunta Hasibi Nichadaria. May I end with my favorite lost cause metaphor. We are like a musk deer searching frantically in the forest for a fragrance that actually lies within our womb. The story Kundali Pase, Mrik Dude Banai. So, my friends, we sit thirsty beside the river. We sit hungry under a tree laden with fruit. We clench potent seeds in a fist, scared of dropping them till we find new ones. Let us remember that no seed is shy of germination, nor does any fruit remain on the tree when ripe, and when it falls, as it does, it will not rot if the ground is fertile. Thank you very much.